Assalamu alaikum guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Dr. Hasna and today we will study about the attachments and insertions on the clavicle. Previously you saw various bony features of the clavicle. In this video, we will gain an insight on what is attached on the clavicle, okay? So let's begin with the lateral one third. If you guys remember that there was an anterior border, a posterior border, a superior surface and an inferior surface. Let's start with the anterior border of the lateral one-third of clavicle. The anterior border of the clavicle gives origin to the deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle is a muscle of the arm. Moving on, the posterior border gives insertion to the trapezius muscle. Trapezius muscle is one of the muscles of the back. Inferior surface of the lateral one-third of the clavicle has two special characteristics that I mentioned in the earlier video. These are the conoid tubercle and the trapezoid ridge. Now these, in key significance, yahi hai, that they basically give uh, attachment to the ligament. Which ligament? The coracoclavicular ligament, which binds the clavicle to the coracoid process of scapula. Now, the coracoid process of scapula will be explained more in detail in the next video. So the conoid and trapezoid parts of the coracoclavicular ligament are attached on the inferior surface of the lateral one-third of the clavicle. So these are the important relations and attachments insertions on the lateral end of the clavicle. One more is that the lateral end also bears a facet, a facet which basically forms the acromioclavicular joint. This part, which is the facet of the lateral end of the clavicle, it binds with the acromion process of the scapula and they form a joint cavity or a joint. Let's move on to the medial two thirds and the medial side of the clavicle. As I mentioned earlier, there was an anterior surface, a superior surface, a posterior surface, and an inferior surface. The anterior surface gives origin to the major muscle called the pectoralis major. It is a muscle of the pectoral region, or you can say in layman terms, chest muscle. Superior surface is responsible, half of it is responsible for giving origin to the clavicular head of the sternocleidomastoid. The sternocleidomastoid, which is a muscle that goes above towards your chin and your mastoid process that goes above. Furthermore, the posterior surface of the clavicle is responsible for giving origin to another muscle, which is called the sternohyoid muscle. Sternohyoid muscle is basically a muscle that connects uh, the posterior end of the clavicle and sternum to the above hyoid bone which is lying right in front of your trachea. So pect major in the anterior surface, sternocleidomastoid on your superior surface and sternohyoid on your posterior surface of the medial two-thirds of the clavicle. Let's go to the inferior side now. So what is this? This is a very important groove called the subclavian groove. The importance of this groove is that it is giving attachment to the subclavius muscle. What is basically the action of the subclavius muscle? The subclavius muscle acts as a cushion for the subclavian vessels that are located between first rib and the inferior surface of the clavicle. So, the subclavian vessels are in the first rib or clavicle ke beech mein se jab guzar ke ja rahi hoti hai, so there is the subclavius muscle that acts as a cushion so that bone is not contact. Na ho. Moreover, in the inferior surface, we talked about an oval impression on the medial end. This oval impression is basically giving attachment to the costoclavicular ligament. What is the costoclavicular ligament that combines the clavicle to the first costal cartilage? Moreover, the medial end basically forms a joint with the manubrium sterni and a fibrous capsule is attached right around the margins of this medial end, forming the sternoclavicular joint. So that's all for the attachments and insertions on the clavicle. Join me in the next video where we talk about the ossification and clinical anatomy. Thank you.